Okay, I want to uh, mention that um, everything I'm going through is, is covered in the manual and you should have a look at the manual as well. Um, not use this video as um, your only guide. It's only a reference to look to. Um, I think actually the manual is probably a little bit more appropriate because it probably covers a few things in a little bit more detail. One of the things I want to show you that I kind of skipped over a moment ago when I had the uh, base up to the laser is uh, I noticed there's a chapter in the manual that talks about laser alignment. So I just, I'm just backing up a moment to go back over that. So I'm just going to take off the cover of the, of the laser. In this case is a front cover. Other lasers is the entire cover that you have to take off get to the optics inside the laser head. Okay. Your manual will also outline the details of these optics. And we'll just zoom in a little bit here. Alright, your laser head actually has two lasers in it, laser one and laser two. There's a few mirrors in here, the second harmonic generator and a beam combiner. The output of laser one hits this first mirror, gets directed to this location, it's a beam combiner. Okay, reflects off the beam combiner into the second harmonic generator where it's converted from 1064 to 532. Now we have green light coming out with also with 1064 and these are dichroic mirrors to help <coughs> encoded for 532 so they reflect 532 and and try to dump off the 1064 so this first mirror we call the far field mirror and this second mirror after it's reflected to the second mirror is called the uh, excuse me uh, yeah that's the far field and that's the, uh, the uh, near field mirror and then out through the front of the laser Okay, the manual talks about aligning these so that the beam comes directly out the output aperture in a straight manner. Now your laser is probably pretty close already. Once again, we can correct any mis misalignment of the output with the mirrors on the uh, uh, the base for the articulating light arm. Okay, but if it's largely out of whack, then you might have to adjust these. This particular laser. The two you would adjust is this far field mirror and this near field mirror. Okay, I'm just going to pan out again. What you use for adjustment is this um, adjustment tool or alignment tool. It's just a tube with two discs in it, and each disc has a little hole in it or aperture. Yeah, there's that first one. That's for near field alignment and one further down the tube you can see that's for far field alignment. The way that this, this tube is used you simply screw it to the front of the laser yeah. I'll rotate this so we can see it a little better I'm also wearing a pair of laser goggles. Yeah. <clears throat> Very important that you have laser goggles, especially when you have the cover off. That cover not only the 532, which is the green light you see coming from the laser, but also the 1064 that is actually produced by the egg initially. Okay, I'm going to power up the laser. This particular laser has an interlock. I think most do. You take the cover off. You need something to hold down that interlock or else the laser won't start. So this particular laser has, just has a red clip. It goes over to hold that switch down. Turn the laser on.
So, once again, you see the laser flashing. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, just because the camera and the and the and the pulse frequency of the laser aren't quite in sync. Um, right now, I only have laser two firing. Laser one's not firing, but output from laser two, 1064. It goes directly through this beam combining optic to the second harmonic generator, gen generator um, far field mirror, and then near field mirror. What I'm looking for is that the beam output from the laser is going through that first aperture hole, through that second aperture hole, down here, and then finally, at the very tail end, and I'll adjust my camera here so you can see it, there's an end cap on that tube, and if you can see green light on that end cap, you know it made it all the way through. Yeah. Okay, so these discs are quite nice because they do fluoresce. So even if you have your glasses on, the glasses, these, these laser goggles, they block out the green. Yeah. <clears throat> but the discs fluoresce, and they fluoresce at a different uh, wavelength than what your goggles block out. So maybe if I just put my goggles over the camera, maybe you can see that the laser largely disappears, but you still see a little glow on the the disc. At least that disc over there. Yeah, that's the fluorescence. I pull it away. Now we see it's nice and bright and green. We can also see the green at the end. Goggles in front. We see the green at the end disappear, but we can still see the fluorescence at that disc. So that makes it useful. So you can still align things um, with your goggles on. So what I see when I see this, I see maybe just a little bit of clip of the laser beam at the last disc and it looks like it's going straight through because I can see a slight halo evenly distributed around the hole in that first disc. Maybe if I pull the camera off we can get a better look at that. And I'll zoom in. There we go. Out of focus. There's that first disc. You can see it's kind of a halo that's well centered down a little further. That's maybe probably too bright for this. I see a little washout in the camera. Maybe if I'll just put the goggles in front of the, the camera. You can see it's kind of clipping off to one side. So we could adjust the far field alignment. Yeah, It's good enough really for what we're about to do with the light arm because once again we can adjust for it with the light arm uh, mirrors. But I'm going to do just a little adjustment so you can see how it's done. Come over here, back. Okay. So the tool to use for this particular laser is simply a paper clip that's been unwound. Yeah. <clears throat> these screws, these are spring loaded screws that push on the mirror. There's the spring. But we just stick the paper clip through that hole and use that to wrench and rotate these screws. So every mirror has two of these. One here, one here. This one here positions the laser the, the mirror up and down. This one here, left and right. <clears throat> this particular mirror is used for the overlap of the two lasers. <clears throat> so if you have misaligned laser sheets, you'll see it in your particle images that you'll just have decorrelated particles. So if you want to align your laser beams, it's done here. I'm not going to discuss that now. But if you want to change the, the position of the output of both beams together, just keep in mind they're combined here. So if we adjust this, it changes position of only laser one relative to laser two. But if I adjust these mirrors up front, this mirror, um, the uh, far field mirror and the near field mirror, 
it will just simply it'll adjust positions of both lasers together. So it looks like a it's just far field needs some adjustment. So there we go. And that was it. Just a small, small tweak. You can actually watch it on the disc. You can even try the horizontal adjustment, the vertical adjustment, and you can see how it clips the end of the, uh, or uh, at the aperture um, in the alignment tool. Once again, what I was watching is over here, and I'm just going to adjust the camera to look at the far field aperture on the adjustment tool. Try to not view the end because it seems to be saturating the camera. So you can just see the, the uh, laser shooting the aperture. I'll rotate a little bit so you can see that all a little better. Yeah. I'm just going to adjust it a little bit so you can see how the beam moves. And we see it clipping the top now. Yeah, and now it's going straight through. Okay, so lining a laser is really not all that bad once you've done it a few times. <laughs> different lasers have different resistance of these screws. Um, for this particular laser, I'm just using this paper clip. For other ones, it's probably easier to use something a little stiffer, like a, a, a real small Allen key might stick in one of these and rotate them. Some of them stick a little bit and you need to get past that um, static friction before you can actually rotate. But in general, the amount you rotate is very, very small uh, on the order of, you know, maximum quarter turn or something like this. Um, shouldn't be a whole lot of um, adjustment that you have to do for these after the laser has been delivered and installed. So I think that covers enough of kind of general laser alignment. Once again, it's probably not necessary for what you're doing as long as I have laser beam coming out the um, aperture of the laser. It's probably aligned close enough and we can correct all the rest once we put the light arm base um, into position.